Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with SAG After Foundation and before I hand over to this wonderful panel that we have for you today, um, I want to remind everyone watching these videos that the SAG After Foundation is a nonprofit organization which is continuing to raise funds for a COVID-19 emergency assistance fund. This is working to support actors who are currently out of work due to all of the film and television productions being closed right now and is helping them with paying basic bills, making rent, buying groceries. So please check out the video, the information below this video and consider supporting if you're able to in any way. Um, and it is my absolute pleasure right now to hand over to our moderator, Ethan Alter. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Ethan Alter from Yahoo Entertainment and I'm here with uh, some of the cast of the great new star series Hightown, which debuted on Sunday, May, this past Sunday, May 17th. It's a great new crime drama set in Provincetown, takes place against the backdrop of the op opioid epidemic um, and features a really great cast of characters uh, in, 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 in small town Massachusetts. So please welcome uh, Shane Harper, plays uh, Junior McCarthy. Uh, Atkins Esteman, who plays Osito. <laughs> uh, Amari Nolasco, who plays Frankie Cuevas. And Don Norwood, who plays Alan uh, uh, Santil, excuse me. <laughs> correct me, correct my name pronunciation there on all your characters. <laughs> Um, so uh, it, good, let's buddy. start with you. I definitely wanted to uh, talk about, take me to the first time you spoke with Rebecca Cutter, who created the series. Uh, w what was your first meeting with her like about uh, uh, meeting with, for, for Junior? Yeah, well, my first, um, my first audition for, I, I just, I got a, a set of sides. I didn't even get a script um, and I went in, um, you know, which is kind of the breakdown. And uh, I felt like I connected the material really, really well. I think she wasn't in that particular uh, room. Just put that one on tape. And then they, they brought me back in and I got to meet Rebecca. Obviously, they casted me. And I think when we got to sit down, finally, once I made it out to New York and got to sit down, talk about the character and talk about her vision and, and, um, and everything like that, I think it, we were more on the same page than, we, you know, than, than, than I thought even initially. And, and the, the work relationship even in the room was so tremendous um, and really nice and, and really comfortable and once we got out to, to New York and started kind of working through the character and the arc and everything um, I was just really excited to kind of get on set and, and and you know take it for a spin because a lot of her heart and soul is really kind of in that junior character and going through this kind of AA you know process and trying to kick his addiction and be a better you know father and a better um, you know uh, uh, partner for his his girl and all of that so we should say he, he's, he's, he's sort of working on the, he, he's, he's working on this, on the water there. He's catching, catching fish for uh, working work, work the dad, trying to keep clean. Um, and, and really he's, he's part of that, uh, part, part of the main brunch of the show, which is trying to put the past and his addictions behind him and having trouble doing that is sort of part of his character arc. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think just getting familiar with, he's kind of the main voice in that AA world in the show, which, you know, the show's not about, the opioid epidemic, but it is a backdrop, obviously. And so I think it was really important to try to channel a lot of truth there. Um, you know, it is a crime drama, it is sexy and fun and dangerous and all that, you know, stuff. But there, there's a lot of truth there um, in that character, and especially with, with Rebecca and I kind of trying to find our way through how that looks for Junior. It was really important to kind of get that and, and, uh, and, and find all those honest moments. But yeah, when he's not doing that, he's catching lobster. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Don, uh, you, you, your character Alan sort of represents the law and order of of, of, of Provincetown. He's he, he's 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 on the force there. He's investigating uh, uh, nar nar narcotics trade. Um, when I got a chance, I got a chance to talk to Jerry Bruckheimer, who executive produces the show. And one of the things he talked about was he really wanted to make sure there was verisimilitude uh, in the in, in the series mm -hmm. and keeping it authentic. So, what were some of the things you did to sort of get to the the realism behind Alan? And, and did you meet with any real life cops in Provincetown? Yeah, I've played a, a few uh, cops before. So I've done ride-alongs and I have uh, my best friend, his uh, uncle is a, a LAPD officer. And so I, I talk with him about a lot of different things. Uh, I've done some philanthropy and things like that. So I've always had like sort of relationship with LAPD. And so uh, just kind of running the scope of whether, you know, whether it be gang activity or drugs or how law enforcement deals with the public at large, how you deal with people every day. You know, we always think about being on the other side, being pulled over or something like that. But just having to literally put on a vest and uniform and go out in the street and do the beat and that whole sort of thing, as well as the detective work, uh, what was detective first grade and all that kind of stuff. Because you see these movies, you really don't know what all that stuff means. And so I would always run that kind of by him in case I ever had to play the role. And so, of course, obviously, um, being part of this project, I've been able to implement all the information. So, 
Was there anything specific you learned about Provincetown that's different from some of the other uh, places where you played cops or cities that, that, that you've uh, ex- researched before? Um, not too much. The uh, drug community is the drug community. It pretty much works the same. <laughs> right. uh, I guess it's just more of a, it has a better facade than most. Most people don't think of drugs and all the kind of things that, uh, that the show reveals uh, when you think of Cape Cod and things like that. So uh, I guess more so people who know, who actually live there or visit the town more frequently kind of know the underbelly. But I think that's probably the juxtaposition as opposed to, you know, anywhere else. You think of New York, you're going to think of certain things. You think of LA, you can think of Miami. Uh, but you don't think of that kind of world when you think of Cape Cod. You think of it as a getaway, uh, a bit of a safe haven. And to discover that, you know, you have hyenas, which is not so <laughs> not so uh, friendly as, uh, as people might think. Uh, but yeah, that's probably the twist in it. But I think the way in which it operates is pretty much the same as any drug community. Uh, Amari, it's safe to say you've, uh, you're familiar with the inside of TV prisons uh, based on some of your past <laughs> roles here. So maybe not as much research <laughs> required for this one. But I did notice in, 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 this, in, this, uh, in this case, as Sucre, obviously, on prison break, he, he was always trying to get out. He's always trying to get away. What, fr- what struck to me about uh, Frankie is that he doesn't need to leave. He seems perfectly happy in his environment because he's the king of all these surveys. That seems you're to be the main, what, one main difference. So what, what did you feel about it, this character versus the other? Um, they're completely two, two different characters, and uh, yeah, and yes, uh, um, agreeing with you. Uh, I already had the research, you know, four years in prison uh, <laughs> doing prison break. Uh, but you know, uh, when when I got the opportunity, when I read the, the the script about, you know, I said, God, prison again. But you know, Frankie was just he captivating. You know, he was one of those guys that I said I cannot pass on this. You know, and again, I had to audition like anybody else and, and earn the part. Um, but it was one of the things that caught, you know, caught my attention was, you know, he is, he's a very charming guy. He, he but you don't want to cross this guy. And of course, you know, having his right hand guy, uh, you know, uh, Osito right next to him, he, it's like a whole, you know, Jordan and Scotty Pippen, <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'll be Pippen, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, he, he feels very comfortable uh, in prison because he can still reach uh, outside of prison too. He's got his right-hand guy doing his job and uh, he, he's a force to be reckoned with. I mean, I don't, I'm pretty sure he doesn't want to be there. You know, he definitely wants to get out and wants to be with his, you know, baby mama and his kid. But, you know, um, he, he's three and four steps ahead. I, I, I call him, he's a, he's a puppeteer. He has, you know, the one way or another way of, of handling all these characters outside of prison. And if you notice, I mean, they all come to him, you know, uh, to, to talk to him, you know, uh, you know, we got, uh, 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 I, uh, why am I going back with all the characters? I want to call them by name and they're, uh, it's a crowded you know, cast. You know, <laughs> I know it's like, no, no, we got you know, Shane and Atkins and, and Monica and James and, and uh, Riley. They all, you know, the only one that never came to see me, and I'm going to hold you to that, is Don. Don never came to actually visit me, brother. You never, not, not even a pain of visit. I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, <laughs> no, um, yeah, I mean, I've been having an amazing, amazing time. It's an amazing cast, and it's watching because we're just talking, me and Don. I, you heard a little bit about this. You know, the first time we saw it, we saw it as actors. You know, we try to see what we did and whatnot, and. But this time, this Sunday, I saw it as, a, as an audience, and, and it's such an amazing show. It just grabs you by the neck. It doesn't let you go. And the writing, I mean, the, what Rebecca did is just, I mean, impeccable. It's just insane. I've always said, you know, when you, want, when you find writing like this, you basically just say the words and get out of the way. It's, it's, it's on the page. Mm. I, I should ask really quickly, the, uh, the 15th anniversary Prison Break is coming up in August. Uh, it premiered in 2005. Oh Do you my God. anniversary you, plans? Is it funny just, to think that's been that long? <laughs> you just made me feel so old. <laughs> no, it's, it's, and it's amazing because I get kids coming up to me that are 15, 14, and say, oh, I love you in Prison Break. I go, you were not even born when we started this. <laughs> um, and it's all because of Netflix. Um, so I haven't heard anything about a reunion or something like that. But um, it would be fun, you know, if we can all do something like this and, you know, all get together on, on a Zoom call and, and talk, you know, anecdotes and, 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 and have a good time and reminisce on those days in prison and running from the law. 
<laughs> Atkins, as Amari said, uh, Osito, sort of the, uh, the, the voice, uh, uh, Frankie's voice on the outside. So what, what, how did you two sort of form that relationship together, knowing that he was on the inside, you were on the outside? How did you, how did you form that bond? Um, well, uh, are you talking about like in the show or just in the, like... in, in the show and behind the scenes too, knowing that you, that, you know, you, you'd have to sort of be his representative outside how you sort of got on the same page that way. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, like uh, the, my interaction and the actual show as far as shooting, um, I actually only had a couple days, uh, to work with Amari, but I felt like we were already very much on the same page about the relationship between the two of us. And, um, also, Rebecca did, as Amari said, a lot of the heavy lifting was already done in the writing. So um, that relationship was very clear already on the page. So I think from the jump, we both already knew um, who each other was and, and how this relationship was going to work. So. We, we had, I mean, our first meeting was at the, the table read, if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken. That's where yeah. we all met. And uh, again, I'm in prison, so I get to see these guys once in a while, you know, the way the schedule was, if they had a scene with me, so of course I would get to see them, but a lot of the times I didn't see much of these guys. So, uh, we, you know, we, we picked it up. It was, like I said, it was right on the page. And I guess mm -hmm. we were, we were, we, we were sympathetical and like, okay, this is how it's going to work. And, uh, and again, I mean, I, I cannot, I cannot have a better <laughs> right hand man than this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Atkins, how did, how did the Provincetown help inform you as a, for, for Osito's character? What, what did you, did you do any research about uh, what the local culture was like or what, uh, or, or meet with anyone to sort of get a sense of what that particular town was like? Um, no, I actually, I to be completely honest. I was not aware of the scene in Provincetown before we got started. Um, so um, there was a lot of learning going into it. Um, I did not know about the, the LGBTQ community that was there. Um, I wasn't aware that there was a Portuguese community. I, I, there was a lot of things that I had to kind of pick up and learn right as we were getting into the, the preparation and process of it. But um, I feel like for Osito, a lot of those things is because he doesn't really deal um, in Provincetown as much like or that doesn't so much inform what he does. You know, um, he's kind of like almost imposing himself on that town. So uh, I felt like there wasn't much of it that I, in my preparation, needed to let inform what he was doing. I mean, obviously there's certain things, but um, it wasn't something that came up super often when I was in the process of prepping for it. Uh, I, I definitely want to touch on some of the uh, female cast that's in the show. And so there's some terrific female characters. Um, the, the, the lead, for example, is Monica Raymond. And Shane, you share a lot of scenes with her. She plays Jackie, who's a fisheries agent, and she has her own turmoil that she's going through. Talk a little bit about working with her and what she brings to, 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 to the series. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I it was a real honor to get to work with her and to get to learn from her. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't... I, this show was a unique opportunity for me, you know, really like this role, getting to step into the role and work with all these amazing people. Like it was a, it was, it was a, a huge learning experience and I enjoyed it um, deeply. And she, she, uh, she's really fun. I mean, she, she's a generous actor. She really gives a lot as far as like, sometimes you, you step onto set and you're not sure how things are going to go. Even if you know the person, you're like a little bit like, you know, the communication sometimes feels like, you know, you have to kind of, it, you're not meeting in the middle. Sometimes you feel like you got to go, you know, to, to get kind of that energy and that rhythm. And with her, it was like, there was never a misstep. Like every time from, from the rehearsal to the last, like the last shot, um, always communicating with me, always like, you know, we were always learning together and like having this really great kind of synergy and time. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, I, mean, I honestly miss it. I, I really do. Um, we had some, we had some really fun, some really fun shoots on the water, you know, the boats freezing our asses off and, <laughs> fun night shoots like you know at the the dun 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 moments where you realize junior might be involved in some things and she's you know like there's there was there's a lot of memories that stand out but she's a really terrific actor and um i'm excited i'm really i'm really you know proud of of her and everything she did for the show and i think people are going to be very impressed with their work do you remember the first scene you shot together and like and, and what that was like just finding your characters on that first day of shooting the first scene we shot, I want to say it was, I want to say it was on, I, I want to say it was the first, I could be wrong, but I want to say it was the first scene in the, in the pilot when she and I are together. 
Um, oh no, you know, it's the bar scene. The, it, the, when, when I tell that joke about the, mm. the dick sucking joke. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Great bonding experience right there. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of, when I do that, that towny, you know, bar moment, that was the first time that we shot together. I was actually really nervous because that's kind of a big piece of material to get out. And, and it was my first day. And so I had all those first day nerves, but <laughs> very calming and very kind and um michael park who plays my dad was really great on that day and like it was it was a it was a really good day but but she chemistry read with me um mm -hmm. so that i could get the part she had been cast and then we read together in the room um and uh that was actually the moment where i was like oh i know this character and i know our relationship and i get this you know and i, I like i really i left that chemistry read feeling really confident and i never usually read leave auditions being like, I, that one went great. You know, I'm always like, <laughs> like self, you know, just a little self-conscious, but that, that audition um, with her in the room was like, I knew that we could work together. So I was happy that we got to. Right. And, and Atkinson and Amara, you both work with uh, Riley, who plays Renee uh, uh, on the show. You have a lot of scenes with her. She's, she's sort of the uh, Frankie's girl, uh, girlfriend, uh, mother of, of, of his kids on the outside. Talk a little about working with her and what she brings to the, uh, to, to the series. Um, I mean, she's, she's my baby mama. <laughs> she's, she's amazing. Just like uh, um, Shane just said, I had to chemistry read with, uh, with Riley. She already had the part. So, um, you know, when it came down to, I don't know how many guys, I had to read with her. And it was, it was again, sparks when it went off. Not only she is a, a beautiful woman outside, but inside. And what, a, what, what, a, what an amazing actress. I mean, to pull off, I mean, what she's been doing expose herself not just physically but you know her soul and and, and being able to play this uh, very complicated and layered character i mean i cannot speak enough and one of the things i want to add to is just i i'm just proud to be part of a show like this one where inclusion is is, is there it's the forefront it's a show written by a woman um directed the first two episodes i think you know was with R rachel morrison an amazing uh, cinematographer and, and she had a great job as a director. Um, our lead actress, you know, woman. And so it's, it's basically, it's produced by a woman, Ellen Schwartz. So uh, let me tell you, I, I, I keep saying this, and I keep repeating myself, but women should just rule the world. Seriously, there's no egos. It's just simple. Things were great. Everything ran smoothly. So again, uh, just very proud of being part of the show. And, and going back to your question, Riley, it's, it's, it's a delight to work, for, to work with. Yeah, I mean, Amari really hit it. Um, I had a couple of scenes with her, and um, I enjoyed every time we worked together. I mean, on screen and off screen, we were just we we joke around and say that we're twins, whether you can believe that or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, she was. Um, uh, I mean, everybody on this project was just. Um, I mean, super talented, but. Um, when I first started uh, working with her, I mean, we were both kind of, you know, we had to sit down and talk, you know, talking about some scenes that we have some scenes that are, you know, some kind of difficult scenes, some scenes where we get physical, that sort of thing. And, um, but I mean, it was just immediately we gelled, we clicked. And, and um, I think that those early connections on, and I, I feel like that was the way all over um, really heightened everything because everybody was already just so uh, locked in and, and, felt comfortable. I feel like, you know, that really helped to elevate the work. And I can't sing her praises enough. All the women involved in this project, I can't say enough about them and how hard they work to make this show what it is. And um, I was just glad to be a part of it. Don, I want to talk to you about uh, James Badge Dale, who's a great, great character actor, one of my favorite character actors working. I always think of his one solo scene in flight. He, he comes yeah. in back and just has that one scene of flight and bl blows that movie away in, in that yeah. one yeah. scene that he has. So what's it like working with him? How did you sort of establish your dynamic? He's he, Alan is sort of Ray's partner, I guess. Yeah, similarly to what they were saying, I think we all just kind of had a, we were all bringing our A game and we had a synergy that just kind of kicked off right away. Um, normally there's like, you know, when you get to uh, developing characters like this with TV, you kind of hang out with your co-stars and kind of like get to know each other. And he and I bonded right there on set. We didn't have to go meet up at a bar or, or you know, spend time. You have to meet with children and all this kind of stuff. And plus his character's a bit of a jerk, so he probably wouldn't want to know my family. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Badge is dope, man. I love Badge. Um, he's a great guy. I see um, 
uh, glimpses of him in the performances. You know, when he's bringing the donuts uh, to Renee, is that's Badge, man. You know, the charm <laughs> of the flickster, uh, that grinds. He's a pretty funny guy. He's, he's entertaining. Um, and he's just, you know, he's a good, uh, we'll say, team player. He knows how to kind of scope everything that's happening on set and with everyone and kind of play the field and everything. So he understands people. And I think that's a, a good talent he has as a human being, as a person. He really understands people. Uh, he's got he's got a big heart, dude. Uh, Badge is a good guy. I like him a lot. Uh, you know, Ray, not so much, but Badge is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the first scene you remember shooting together? What, what, what was day one for you, the two of you? Oh, day one was when we were looking at Osito, and he went and stole the, the Remy's bag. Uh, and... Uh, we really, we were like still building, you know, together. But again, I think what, what it is with he and I is we have similar ways in which we approach our characters. And so I could pick up quickly on what he was trying to do, and what we were, you know, trying to do together. So it kind of just fell together automatically. And in these moments of like him kind of freely doing his own thing and me trying to really kind of catch up with whatever he was trying to do, kind of play well to that moment. And we really didn't know each other well. So we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants in sort of an ad lib moment. It kind of felt like it, but it played to great moments uh, in the scene. So him getting out the car and in the middle of talking to him was kind of like, well, really? You know, so it just felt really present and really real. I also, I definitely want to talk about creator uh, Rebecca, and uh, Rebecca Cutter who created the show and sort of what she brought to uh, every episode, how she, and she inspired you with sort of what sort of your one-on-one -on -one conversations with her were like about your character. So Don, sort of speaking with Rebecca, what, 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 how did she help you form Alan? And, 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 uh, uh, just uh, allow me to, I guess you could say, tap into the angry black man, like you're this black guy on this forest, you probably eat a lot of stuff. So you can let that out every once in a while. Feel free to kind of let us see the, the eggshell breaking a little bit here and there. There were some other lines, some freebies I threw out uh, in some of the scenes. Uh, not all of them made it, uh, but you know, there were little moments where I got to kind of jab it at Ray and things like that. So um, she freed me up to go, you know, we want to see a little bit of the angst. You know, obviously he's not completely uh, nailed down in any way, but he, you know, we want to see a little bit of his little perturbedness. And obviously there's some particular scenes that you get to really see me vent about <laughs> my concerns. But yeah, she was great in uh, helping me understand the character. If I ever had any questions, things like that. And as everyone says, she writes really well. So when you read it on the page, you kind of get what the scene is and what, what they want you to deliver, you know, when you uh, shoot. I can tap out yourself. What, what was your what was your dynamic with Rebecca like? Um, from the start, Rebecca has been fantastic. And um, as I said before, I mean, our job was made very easy by the writing, just being already at that level. You know, sometimes as actors, you get on a project and you find yourself having to elevate the work. And that wasn't the case here. Like the roadmap was very clear. But also on set, when, you know, as you're going through the process, um, I always felt like I was heard, you know, if I had a, an idea or a question, you know, anything like that, she would sit down, we chop it up. And maybe it didn't always go the change I wanted to, but it was nice to be able to feel like, you know, like if I had an idea or, you know, a thought about the character that it was the consideration was really taken. And I can't say that that's always been my experience. So, and I felt like um, that really freed me up to really um, do some different things with the character feeling Another thing, also feeling like she really let me have the ownership of the character. I mean, it's someone that she created, but she gave it to me and, and let me really run with it. So, um, and I feel like uh, when you watch the show and you see the performances, like it's all throughout that she really let us um, kind of sink our teeth into it. And, um, she, you know, it's kind of tough to let go of something that's near and dear to you. Mm -hmm. And I felt like she was able to do that. And, um, just, I mean, just an amazing leader, just a great person in general, you know, um, just pleasant, like a pleasant person to be around. So all of those things wrapped into one and uh, there you have it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I have to add, I mean, my experience with her was just always great. We, she always, always listened to whatever you had to say. Um, and remember, these are her babies. Um, and I remember having a conversation about something you know about how frankie would deal with the whole thing about him wanting allowing or wanting renee to get close to ba uh, uh bruso and uh, in, in to what extent it's you know it's it's frankie okay with this and i'm like there's no way i can do that like amaudi would never let his 
wife or baby mama be with another man in, in order to get info or whatever. Um, and she explained it to me this way. She goes, a Maori wouldn't because you're nice. You're a nice, you're a, you're a great, you're a nice human being. <laughs> you got great morals, whatever. But there are people that will, and, they, and there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, we had just amazing uh, discussions about, you know, and, and she helped me uh, find this character because one of the things that I, I, I didn't want to fall into that trap of playing the, uh, the cliche villain, like, ha, 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 he's so mean, you know, you know, mustache twirling. I wanted to somewhat humanize him. And, and, and of course, having a family and having a kid and caring for them, it's, it, it's a way of doing that. Um, and again, it gets it's so well written, you know, in, in the layers and the moments and nuances, you know, and there's, like I said, I call him a puppeteer because he's, 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 there's a plan behind everything. Every move he does, there's a plan. And sometimes he'll make him believe that like, it's your idea when really he just made you do, I know, I, again, it, it, it's just phenomenal. And, and she was, she, she's brilliant. All I could say, she's just brilliant. Jane, anything that anything to the chorus of raves? What what's a specific uh, Rebecca story that you could share? It's, it's ten out of ten from us. <laughs> <laughs> Scores for her. Uh, yeah, I'll say I, honestly, I think probably the most collaborative and like soothing person that I've worked with in my career, as far as what she brings as the person that like she, she made this world right and so you step on and like like atkins was saying she gives it back to the to you know she 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 gives back she gives it back to the to the actors in that way while also like being a very strong and and like uh and and piercing light where you're like i need some help right now you know we know what's going on then she'll be like here's what's going on and you're like okay great like having and she was on set every single day you know obviously um, and knowing that she was going to be on set every day, like gave it, like, I think it gave, at least for me, it gave me a lot of confidence knowing she's there, she knows the world. And it's something that, um, what, what made this project so wonderful was the passion behind what it was. It it's not just this procedural, you know, cop show. That's not all it, it is. It's something much more. There's so many layers to it. The opioid, you know, epidemic backdrop, you know, this, in, this, you know, inclusion and having a lead that looks like this and what it says to the world. And, and I think Rebecca's passion for those stories is what made us be able to get in there and do what we did in such a, in such a way that like, we're all very proud of it and doing all these zoom interviews and doing all this. It's not a labor. It's a, it's like, it's fun because we, we all had fun. Yeah. And we care each other and we care about the project. And that is a, that's a top to bottom kind of economic thing. You know, it's like, it comes from the emotional yeah. economics of that is top to bottom and it, and it comes, it flows down to us. And so I'm really grateful for her for that. And um, you know, obviously um, yeah, there's nothing, I mean, you can't say enough good stuff. Yeah. Well, one of the things I just purely enjoy about the show, too, is the fact that it sort of gives us the summer that we probably won't have because everyone's outdoors. Or <laughs> on their problem set. I was really jealous. I was like, man, I would love to be outside right now. Uh, and I guess just paying attention to the, to, to the times we're in and how strange it is to be watching that. Uh, I, I mean, for, for you guys in general as actors, wh where, do you, where do you sort of feel right now in terms of safety about returning to work? Do you have any specific thoughts about when you'll feel safe going back to a set, uh, for, for whether it's a high town set or another set? Uh, well, I, I read some articles on, uh, I think Warner Brothers and a few other companies were talking about how uh, some scripts have to be rewritten, whether that's, you know, intimacy, uh, scenes with intimacy or combat scenes and things like that, um, and how they approach writing stories. I mean, obviously, you have to cut the crew down because that's a huge portion right there. You know, your, your sound, your cameras, you know, uh, wardrobe, makeup, et cetera. And so all of that, I guess, is being discussed on the higher levels of, of a construct. And I guess whoever comes up with the best, you know, construct or template is kind of going to get piggyback, kind of like the Zoom thing, right? You look up and everybody's kind of doing uh, the Zoom thing and kind of set a template so people start following it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I think someone's going to figure it out and get the right combination where it's safe, but at the same time, you get quality, you know, work to present. And once that sort of, you know, lock is, is, is put in place, then others will sort of piggyback on that. Uh, but I think they're still trying to figure all that out. Everyone wants to be safe and everybody's empathetic and, and understands. Uh, 
So I don't think that anyone's going to put anyone else in any, any major dangers in any way, even if that comes down to, you know, location changes and stuff like that. It seems like everyone's putting their best foot forward and really solving the issue so that so we all can move forward. Uh, Atkins, how do you feel about that? Do you have any sort of feelings about how a way forward for, for returning to set? Um, you know, it's interesting. I'm here in Atlanta and um, there's a lot of rumblings of things getting, I mean, I, I've been hearing tale of productions that are starting up or gearing up for next month or the month after that. Um, and it's tough because obviously you don't want to put anybody in harm's way. But at the same time, there's a lot of people who've been financially and in many other ways affected by not being able to work. I mean, you know, nobody can go for so long without having a check, you know. So it's it's you can't lean too hard in any one direction. But um, I'm hoping that, um, like Don was saying, that, you know, people will sit down and really find a course to move forward where um, people can feel safe to come to set. And um and, uh, you know, like not have to fully compromise uh, the story. Like, I mean, when you look at our show and I'm thinking about no scenes with crowds, no scenes with people being together or close, that's that changes high town a lot. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, I think that, you know, people really have to hit the drawing board on this one and figure out um, how we can do it all and, and, and still tell the story and tell it in an entertaining way but not put people at risk and let people get back to work, you know, but um, all of it has to be done responsibly. And as far as myself goes, if those criteria are met, I'm, I'm happy to work on any project, you know. We're coming up on time, but just really quickly for Amari and Shane, do you have anything you'd like to say to fellow actors right now as we're all sort of facing these uncertain times? What sort of your, what do you see as the, what, do you, what are your hopes for the near future? Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to piggyback on what the guys say about safety comes first. And, uh, you know, we all want to get out there. Um, trust me, I'm dying to go. I, I, I'm not happy if I'm not working. <laughs> That's how I, so to all those fellow actors, you know, let's just, you know, be patient. Um, we don't, we don't, we don't want to, you know, get out there prematurely and, and, and regret anything. Um, you know, I, I'm sure, and I'm hoping we got somebody, you know, like Don said, they're, 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 they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out and soon um, because I, we're all in the same boat. We all want to work. We all have, you know, responsibilities. And uh, we just need to um, trust that, the, you know, our, our leaders are, are doing the, 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 the right thing. They're, they're, they're going to take in the, the right measures and precautions to, uh, for us to get back to a safe environment and, and hopefully – you know, bring season two. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think that um, the season two of like Low Town, because if no one's hooking up, <laughs> right? There's, there, yeah, I think like there's, it, there's so much we can't control right now, unfortunately, and um, embracing that is really hard, especially if you're having financial trouble, if you have loved ones that are sick, or or you know you've lost potentially. Like I don't want to, you know, we don't downplay any of that and um and it, but i think what the the most positive aspect that you can control those little things is daily to like you know try to try to reflect on and and you know whatever that looks like i don't know it looks different for each person but you know try to forget about the stuff you can't control think about the things you can't control and yeah. take one day at a time because if you if you get too far into next week or Three months from now, your head's gonna blow up and you'll be able to sleep. So just try to stay, you know, stay in the moment and you know, on the things you can control. Great. Well, thank you so much, guys, for hopping on the call today, uh, and and thanks everyone for watching. Check out High Town Sundays on Stars, great series, and what's hope for a season two? It'll be an all animated season two. Just just a <laughs> graphic novel on TV. <laughs> just record thank it you, from your Ethan. home. Thank you, Ethan. Thank you so awesome. Much, Take care, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.